Hey guys, Peter here, 630. Uh, I'm going to teach you today how to change out the flat on your tricycle. All right, hey guys, it's Peter here, 630. I run uh, customer service, quality control, and also operations. So if anything along the line goes wrong for you, you know who, you know who to call. Just give us a call and we will get an answer for you. Um, today I'm going to show you that you can change out the front wheel which has the motor you can change out the your flat if you get a flat on the front motor wheel and I want to tell you that you can do it because obviously tricycles and e-tricycles are bulky and they're heavy and so it's gonna be hard to get to a bike shop nowadays there are mobile mechanics but listen I know that you got an e-tricycle to get back out in the world and start getting moving and take control of your life again uh, and this is another way to do it let's dive in I want you to do it yourself okay all right let's go I want to show you the thing seems a little heavy too okay so you know, trying to get this off to a bike shop, yeah, it can be done, but you might want a buddy who has a pickup truck or something. So anyway, let's see if we can do it ourselves. It takes very few tools. You will need an air pump of some kind. Uh, one thing I do want to tell you is don't go to a gas station and fill up the tire with, um, uh, with, the, with the hose there. It'll, it'll pop it. Those are made for cars. All right. So to show you that it can be done very simply, I'm even going to use the tool kit that comes with your tricycle or with your e-trike. So I'm going to pull out, I'm going to use an 18 millimeter. Let's see if I can find that puppy. Oh, I took it out already. Here it is. I'm going to need something to snip some zip ties with right here. All right, cool. Let's go for it. So the first step is we're going to loosen the brakes. So it's very simple. You just go ahead and grab this little silver, this little silver noodle here. It's actually called a noodle. You squeeze the brakes together, and you can pull the noodle out. I'll position myself here. Maybe we'll get that close up. Maybe we won't. And then the brakes will come apart like that. That's just an easy operation. It doesn't use any tools at all. That's also how you get the wheel in, and then you can reattach the brakes. Okay. So now what we want to do is so that you can remove the wheel to fix the tire. There is a connection here. If this was a solid piece of, of wire right here, you wouldn't be able to remove, remove the wheel. So we're going to disconnect this. When we do this, we want to be really careful because there are tiny, tiny little pins in here. If one of those pins gets hurt just a little bit, you're going to get this funny check engine light. Check engine light just like you get in your car and uh, it's going to be annoying. We'll probably have to send you a new wheel or something. It could even be very costly, all right? So we'll be gentle with that. Now, so what we need to do to get to that, we're going to need to snip these zip ties. We really just need to snip the, the one on the lower part. It's over here in my helmet. And then I'm carefully going to pull the connection apart. There you go. Now they're separated. Now the bike or the, the front wheel is disconnected from the rest of the e-tricycle. Now when you put this back together, you've probably done this if you've assembled it yourself, but if you had a friend or someone else do it, then you may not know this. There's an arrow right here. And then there's an arrow on the other side too. You need to line these up, line the arrows up very carefully and very gently. You want to push it in gently. And then when you start to feel some resistance, then you can go ahead and push it firmly because right above the, the arrow on the wheel side, there's a tiny little line. You want that line to go all the way up into the other side when you reconnect it so that it has a good, firm, positive connection. If it's not all the way in, you'll still get that check engine light. Uh, and we've had a lot of folks sometimes that uh, aren't able to push it all the way in because it does take a, a pretty, firm, uh, pretty firm force there, okay? So just make sure that that little tiny line gets all the way nice and tucked up into the, the uh, other connector here. That way you know that you're going to have a good positive connection and you won't have the check engine light. Okay, doke. So now that we've got the electrical connection disconnected, we're going to remove a rubber cap on this side. It's just a cap that covers the axle nut and then right here another one this one can stay on the wire all right and now we're going to grab our 18 there's an 18 millimeter wrench and we're going to loosen the axle nuts all right oh by the way this wheel is really dirty um, the, uh, some of the folks from our company took it off road recently uh, which uh, you can do I highly advise you do do it and have some fun I mean, why not get out there and live a little bit? You can take these things off-road. You can get muddy, you can get dirty. Um, you can get yourself out of a jam if you get into one. Yeah, that's what life's for, right? Okay, so now it's really that simple. It just lifts right out, okay? 
This is also a little bit heavy because it does have a hub motor in it. It's full of, full of copper windings, which is, what, uh, which is what turns this into basically, well, it's a motor, actually. Same thing as a generator, but it puts out power. Now, this tire is not flat, but I'm gonna make it flat here, all right? I'm gonna get another tool here really quickly. I'm gonna show you that you can change the tire also without any tools. I'm just gonna let some air out here. Isn't it nice that the tricycle holds itself while you're working? You can't do that with a regular bike. Okay, this tire is flat now. Now, you know, in terms of um, repairing the flat and all that, that would be a different video. Usually you would put in a whole new tube. There's a tube inside of here, I'll show you that. Or you could actually patch it. I would advise just putting in a new tube, but um, you know, in a pinch you can also patch it or you can put some slime in there. Okay, so I'm gonna use my fingers and my hands now to lift the tire bead off of the rim of the wheel, okay? And so, it's nice and flat, there's no uh, air in there. And I'm gonna lift it up like this. And I'm gonna try and get both beads up and over the rim. Takes a little bit of strength. You're gonna shove downward like this. Oop. Oh, I may have to do a little editing there. A little Hollywood magic. And a little more, a little more air out here. Okay. Let's pull this right up. That was it. There's just too much air in there. So I'm gonna pull it right up. And then this will peel right down like that. So at first I still had a little bit too much air in there. Okay, so inside, inside of your tire is a tube. Now, some folks don't know this, but the tube is actually what holds the air. It's kind of like a little balloon, okay? And so that needs, to be, say, that needs to be tucked up in there a little bit. When you put in a new tube, you want to inflate uh, the new tube just a little bit so that it holds its shape, all right? And then we'll go ahead and put it back on. I'll show you how you can just use your hands. You don't need any special tools, and you should not use any tools ever um, uh, putting on a bike tire, unless you have specialized race tires that require it. But if you use a tool, like some people sometimes think they can use a screwdriver or a spoon or something to push the tire back on, you're probably going to pop the tube and you're going to have to do the whole process over again. Okay? So I got one bead on here, meaning one side of the tire, and then the other bead is still here off of the tire. I'm going to start at the valve end and tuck it in and make sure that tube is tucked nicely inside the tire and is not getting in between the tire bead and the rim. All right. There it goes. Put the other bead. Now it's all the way, excuse me, it's all the way mounted on there again. And then I'm going to go ahead, starting at the valve so I know where I am, I'm going to look both sides and make sure that the tube isn't coming out anywhere. And then when I inflate it, I'm also going to inflate it slowly to make sure that the, the tube doesn't poke out and pop out anywhere, because that could be a source of flats. You also want to make sure that there's a nice piece of rim strip or rim tape around the inside of the rim right here. That protects from the spoke holes. Okay, cool. So we just pretended that we had a flat and that we took off the uh, tire, changed out the tube, and now we're going to put it back again. Okay? So there are directional tires. Uh, for a tricycle, it really doesn't matter which way the direction goes. You're not going to be going highway speeds in the rain or anything. But if you want to know which direction, the easiest way is to, is to reference the rear wheel and just make it match. So we'll go ahead and slip the wheel back into the axle. You can see that there is a, a little shape on the axle that helps it to be guided right into the position that it should be on the axle, that's to make sure that the motor doesn't just turn, um, <clears throat> uh, just turn inside of the forks instead of actually propelling the bike forward. So make sure that it slips into the, uh, into the fork correctly. I don't have it all the way in yet. Here we go. Oh, sorry guys, I put it in backwards. The, the tread on this, on this bike is actually backwards, but it doesn't matter, like I said. Okay, 
There we go. So now we've got it properly positioned. We can just go ahead and tighten down the axle nuts. Make sure it's seated all the way in there. Actually, we should do it. We'll do a close up of this so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing because you want to get this right. So we'll just kind of hand tighten those. Now, when you put the wheel in, you want to make sure that it's centered nicely into the fork, otherwise, the brakes will be off. Um, and that just means, you know, eyeball the, the wheel and make sure that it's, you know, not going to the left or going to the right in the, in the forks. And then, you can tighten it down with your 18. You can crank down these puppies. Uh, a lot of parts on bikes are pretty delicate because they need to be light um, and inexpensive uh, relative, relatively. And so... You can tighten those down as much as you want, but a lot of a lot of parts like these bolts here, they're just little little bolts for holding the fenders and things like that. With those, you want to be delicate because uh, you know bike parts are not like car parts; they are a lot lighter um, because it's the propulsion to help facilitate better propulsion. Okay, now I'm going to take those two arrows and line them up perfectly. And while I'm doing this part, remember be very gentle while you're lining those little pins up. These pins are very tiny and very important. Messing up one, just one, can ruin the whole thing. So we line them up with those arrows, and then once we see that we've gotten them inserted somewhat, then push it all the way in to that line. And then that'll make sure you have a good, firm, positive connection like you need. We'll replace the rubber axle cover here, the rubber axle cover over there, and then you can grab a pump and pump up your tire. Your uh, tire pressure is always on 